you're in the middle of what feels like the most endless series of boat projects ever. You really need something that's a quick fix, bang for the buck, makes things look amazing really quickly. What can you do? Pull out a can of white paint. Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. I'm talking about the joys of painting not the most accessible spots like lockers and bilges and what a difference that makes. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Lunatech, makers of the hydration spray bottle, odor-free dishcloth, and self-cleaning washcloth. Lunatech offers practical gear designed to save water and reduce waste. A water bottle that doubles as a garden hose? A dishcloth that doesn't get stinky? Yes, please! Visit lunatechgear.com to learn more. Use code BOATGALLEY to save 10% on everything. Lunatech, innovative gear for your outdoor adventures. When we're talking about boats, certainly our outdoor adventures are on those boats. And sometimes you're in the middle of a massive project. And yeah, those projects can feel endless. There are pieces you've taken off that need to be put back on. There are things that you're waiting on other people to get to you for you to be able to finish the work that you're doing. And you want something to just give you a jolt of, yes, I accomplished that. I got it done. I can check it off. And an easy facelift for even the darkest sections of the boat, like the bilge, inside cabinets, inside the anchor locker, a coat of white paint will do absolute wonders for making the boat feel new and clean. We've done this on both Calypso and Mischief, and most recently did this on Mischief in the anchor locker up front, and I gotta tell you what a difference it makes. When we did it on Calypso back in 30 years ago, you could buy oil-based household paint, which is what people used to use in the bathroom, and it's fabulous for use in wet spaces. It's a little bit harder to find oil-based paint because everybody's going to latex, which is much, much easier to clean up. But recently on Mischief, we've been using Bilge Coat, which is an Interlux Marine paint that is specially formulated to be used in the bilge. It's actually designed to help make surfaces not absorb oil and grease and water. Bilge Coat dries incredibly fast, and it looks great. As with any paint project, there are a few steps that you have to get done before you can even open that can of paint and grab a roller or a paintbrush. And prep even in those little areas that you won't be staring at for hours on end, it makes a big difference. So with no further ado, here are seven steps to using bilge coat or really any paint, but I would advise that inside a locker, inside the bilge, inside the anchor locker, using something that is designed to be hard wearing and resist water and other kinds of contaminants. Because in a locker, you might spill cooking oil. In a locker, you might have a can that rusts through. In the anchor locker, you're going to have slime and stuff that comes in from the outside when you bring the anchor down. Even if you're cleaning it off really well, there's still some residual stuff that comes in there. And in the bilge, of course, there's the possibility of, well, anything that gets into the bilge. So if you're not going to use bilge coat or a marine paint that is designed for that kind of application, make sure that that paint is hard wearing and oil based if you can do it. There's a uh, Rust-Oleum makes a metal primer and paint that is actually supposed to be oil based. And we've used that with some great success in the past years. Step one, remove any loose or peeling paint. This was definitely the case in Mischief's anchor locker where you had just shards of paint hanging off of the under deck. And using a pressured hose and a gentle deck brush, and it helps a whole lot getting any loose or peeling paint. If it's really kind of tenacious but still peeling and you know that as soon as you start applying paint, it's going to come off, you can use a metal brush or some kind of a stiffer brush but you want to remove any loose or peeling paint that's there. Why? Because if you leave loose or peeling paint on there, any new paint that you put on top of it is just going to wind up coming off when the underlying substructure of paint comes off. 
So don't waste your time. Just take some time and get rid of that stuff. A wet dry vac on hand is really helpful for making sure that the chips don't go into the bilge. And if they go into the bilge, the bilge pump will likely get clogged on them. Step two, because you're probably talking about lockers and gross stuff if you're dealing with an older boat, you want to wash the area really well with some kind of degreaser or heavy cleaner. Our current heavy cleaner of choice is TSP, which is trisodium phosphate. It comes in small containers as a powder. You mix like a tablespoon of that stuff to a quart of water, warm water, and mix it really well. What we do is we paint it on, scrub it on, and then rinse very thoroughly. It works spectacularly well. Step three, you want to dry the area extra well. This is not easy to do with a towel or anything. We leave a box fan that's pointed into that area for at least 24 hours to really thoroughly dry it. Step four, mask off any areas that you don't want to get paint on. For us in the anchor locker, that meant taping off teak trim. It meant making sure that any electrical wires or things that I didn't want to accidentally get paint on, I would I wrapped with tape. Some places it was wrapping a junction box in a Ziploc that I then taped around. Sometimes when you're up in boat yoga poses, it can be very hard to be as nitpicky and careful as you normally might be able to in a place that doesn't involve having to contort. So masking can help save some heartache later. Anything big that you can remove, like I took off a light from the anchor locker and took off a couple of pieces, we actually removed the bits were coming through. Anything big that you can remove, the better because it just means that access is better and it means that you're putting a coat of paint underneath that big stuff. Step five, get your paint kit together, including gloves, a paint tray and roller, a brush for cutting in or the spots that a roller can't reach, and a respirator. Obviously you need the paint too, so if you haven't ordered it, maybe that should have been step one, like pre-step one, make sure that you have the paint on hand. I do like eyeballing the space that I'm going to be working in, and I plan my paint route, trying to make sure that I can extricate myself when I'm done. For example, in the anchor locker, I needed to go way up front, but then there were also some spaces that were down, which involved having my head upside down. And I wanted to make sure that I was doing this stuff that I was hanging my head upside down first. Otherwise, I would have gotten my hair stuck in recently painted stuff that was further up. So spending a little bit of time, here's that thinking chair coming in handy once again. I like really spending time kind of thinking out how I'm going to get myself out of where I need to go. Step five is also a good time to put down cardboard. Any place that you need to put down your tray, figure out where your paint tray is going to be and making sure that you can access it from your strange areas that you have to be in. And I like to make sure that I've cleared a path out of where I'm painting so that I don't have to move things around when I might have paint on my hands because no matter how careful I am, I tend to get paint on my hands. Step six, make sure that your paint is thoroughly mixed. A lot of paints have dissolved solids that can settle out if the can has been sitting too long. And taking a paint stir stick or a clean stick of some kind, making sure there's no sludge on the bottom is a good one, even if it's recently been shaken up at the store where you bought it. I still always open it up and take a paint stick and stir and just make sure there's nothing there. Generally, it doesn't take that long. Making sure that those dissolved solids are evenly suspended is a good way to make sure that you're actually getting what you're paying for with the stuff that's in the paint. Step seven, get yourself and your painting supplies into position. Put your gloves on and your respirator and start painting. Why a respirator? Particularly if you're working inside somewhere, besides the fact that almost any can of paint I've ever looked at will talk about making sure you have proper safety equipment. But if you're using bilge coat, it's pretty stinky stuff. And 
having a respirator on means that you can actually work with it and you're not killing yourself with inhaling the stuff that is making it not absorb oil and water. Bilge Coat is definitely specially designed to prevent the absorption of moisture, oil, or sludge. It dries super hard. It wears really well. You don't need to sand between coats. Instead, actually, they tell you on the can, don't sand between coats unless you're trying to put on another coat way after the time has passed. It makes reapplication super simple. So we wind up doing a coat a day, leaving it to dry very well between coats, and then we give it a few days actually to finish really kicking off before we load up the lockers. So we just actually redid the anchor locker. We were doing some fiberglass work up front. We didn't even put the pieces of wood back in and we had painted the pieces of wood that form a shelf in the anchor locker area. Makes it super easy to sit on when you're working on the fiberglass to put the stem piece in. I mentioned that in the last podcast episode. But we didn't even put the pieces of wood back in until the paint had had a couple of days to really dry. And before we were working on that area up front, we actually put cardboard down to protect the paint as much as we can. We do find that three coats or four is really pretty important. The can will tell you two, but we find that three coats works the best. Um, Sometimes four in places, but mostly it's three. The first coat will look very splotchy and uneven, and you'll say, oh my gosh, this isn't working. The second coat goes on a little bit better, and then by the time you're rolling on that third coat, you're feeling really pretty good. We found that this is a great project to take on when you have other hurry up and wait stuff happening. It's a super fast way to make the boat look clean and new. It doesn't really take that long, and it's relatively inexpensive. Painting the insides of lockers and the anchor locker and the bilge white has the added benefit of then if something goes wrong and there is a problem, you can see it very, very easily. The white will reflect light, so it's simpler to see in the lockers and see what you have. But also if something has spilled, you can see where the spill is. Whereas if you're trying to be dealing with a dark locker, it's really hard to tell where the spill might be. The other thing is, because this paint is in the bilge or in lockers, it's a fantastic place to practice your painting skills. Do you have to do it? No, this is not a must be done project. No boat has ever sunk or not been able to sail well because the bilges are dingy and gray. Does it immediately make you feel better? Does it make you feel like you're making progress on what might otherwise be an interminable set of boat projects? Absolutely. And for that reason alone, I would argue that it's very worth grabbing a can of bilge coat and start painting. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you when neither one of us is dealing with painting lockers of any kind. And we can just toast to our incredible good fortune at being able to live this amazing lifestyle. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love hearing from our listeners. We got the nicest note from somebody who had just discovered us because a friend had recommended us to them. We had the nicest note that just made both my day and Carolyn's day. And that's not the only reason to hear from listeners, but it really, it was heartwarming. So thank you, Jason, for that lovely note. We love it when you share us with your friends because you never know who's going to find great value in it. And we love it when you don't forget to subscribe. The Boat Galley is all about helping you make boat life better. And how do you know if you're going to make boat life better if you don't subscribe? I hope you have the most spectacular week.